Hey folks, in today's video, I wanna show you how to run a .NET 8 Blazor application inside of a Docker container. This video is part of my build a blog in Blazor series. And at the beginning of the series, one of the things I talked about was having a minimum viable product. And technically with what I have is a very minimal product. Right now I have the ability to come in here and manually add in the code to build a blog post. Now this isn't ideal, but it is minimal and it does work. There's still a bunch of features we're missing, but if all you care about is having blog posts that people can search on the web and find, this technically will work for you. But let's go ahead and add the things we need to get this running in Docker. The reason I'm setting this up for Docker is because it gives you options on where you can deploy this. Most cloud providers have a way of running web applications as a Docker container, and it also gives you the ability to just run this as a Docker container inside of a server. To get started with Docker, the first thing we're going to need is a Docker file. In the root folder of my project, I'm going to add a new file. I'm going to call it Docker file. And inside this Docker file, we're going to add the instructions on how to build our image. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start from the Microsoft.NET SDK for version eight. And I'm going to tag that with the name of build because we're gonna reference this a little bit later in our Docker file. Next, I'm going to add an argument for the build configuration with the default value of release and then set the working directory to slash SRC for source. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a restore to download and install our NuGet packages. And, but before I do that, I'm copying in the different project files in my solution. And the reason I'm only copying in the project files and not all of the files is because of how caching and layers work in Docker. If you're not familiar with how caching works in Docker, basically what is happening here is this .NET restore is only going to run the first time we run this as long as these three files don't change. So in caching, if everything before a given layer has not changed, it won't rerun the, all those previous layers. And basically what that means is if we don't change our project configurations or add any NuGet packages, this won't have to rerun every time we build our image. And then after restoring it, we're going to want to build our project. So I'm going to copy in all of the files now, and then I'm going to set the working directory to source slash blazer blog. And that is a folder where our main project is, which is this one right here. And then next we're going to run .NET build. I am targeting the specific project that we want to build. And then I'm passing in the build configuration from our argument. And then last is the output, which is going to be slash app slash build. And next we're going to do a publish. And I'm going to do this in a new stage. So I'm gonna say from build as publish. And you can see that this build is the name of the build from this up here. And what this is basically doing is take the image or the layer that I'm using here and use it as my starting point for this new stage. And then next I'm going to re-add my argument for the build configuration because arguments aren't shared between stages. And then lastly, I'm going to run .NET publish. I'm going to target our specific project. And then again, passing in the build configuration, giving it an output of app slash publish. And then lastly, I'm passing in the parameter to use app host as false. Now that we have the stage done for publishing our application, now we need to build a stage to actually run it. And for this final stage, I'm going to use the Microsoft.NET ASP.NET image, which is their runtime image. And again, for version eight, I'm going to set the working directory to slash app. And I'm going to expose two ports, 8080 and 8081. What ports you'd expose here will depend on where you end up running this application. If you do put this on the cloud somewhere, you'll want to expose the ports that that cloud uses. So just keep that in mind that you may want to have this a little bit different. And then I'm going to run the copy command and I'm going to copy from my publish stage, which is this stage up here. And since the output of our publish was slash app slash publish, I want to copy that folder, which is slash app slash publish into my current working directory, which is app. And then lastly, we're going to add an entry point of .NET and we're going to run that DLL. And we now have what should be a working Docker file. Before I run and test this, I'm gonna add one more file to our application, which is going to be the Docker ignore file. So add a new file, dot docker ignore. Then I'm going to paste in all of these different lines. I will have a link to this code in the description down below. So if you wanna go in and copy this, but these are generally the folders that you do not wanna have in your final Docker images. Now we can go build and run this Docker image and make sure that it's working. I'm gonna open a terminal. I'm just using the integrated terminal in JetBrains Writer. Make sure you're in the root of your project. So I'm gonna run an LS and just make sure I'm in the right folder. And you can see here's my Docker file. You wanna be in the same folder as your Docker file. Now we can run docker build. I'm gonna give it a tag name of blazer blog. And then dot means use the Docker file in the current folder. And then we'll go ahead and run that. And once that's done building, we now have an image that we can go run. But before we do that really quick, I wanna show what I was talking about with the layers and caching. So if I scroll up here, you can see that that build took 25 seconds. 
That's because it's running this for the first time and so it's running every single stage. Now if I just say docker build again, that's going to finish almost instantly. So if I scroll up again, you can see that finished in 0.3 seconds. And that's because nothing in my project changed. So every single layer is the exact same and so everything's cached and it can just reuse the cache and not have to rebuild the entire image. And then back in the Docker file, I'm just gonna point out that usually a .NET restore is one of the things that takes the longest to build an image. And that's why generally you wanna have that cache so it doesn't take so long to build your images. All right, now let's go in and run this. The command for that is docker run. I'm gonna give it a name of blazer blog. I'm going to run it in detached mode, so dash D. Now I'm going to use dash P to map our ports. So for my host port, I'm just going to use, let's say 5005. And then on the image side, I'm going to use 8080. And then lastly, we give it the name of the image that we built, which is also Blazor blog, and then we run it. And if I go into Docker desktop, you can see I have a few different containers here, but the one we just ran is Blazor blog, and it's the green one and it's still running. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up port 5005. And my homepage, I still just have hello world. So obviously this isn't actually ready to deploy, but you know, this is just a demo. But I do have a page that I was using for testing, which is run SQL Server on M1 or M2 MacBook. And if I go to that, you can see it loads. And just a couple things you wanna spot check to make sure this is working is images. So this image is loading, which is great. I added a couple components for embedding YouTube images and gists from GitHub. So those are both working, which is great. And then down here at the bottom, we have a code block, which has syntax highlighting. So that means that our JavaScript is working from one of my previous videos. And it seems like to me, everything is working the way that it should. So now if I were to go in and clean up the page, make actual blog posts, clean up my homepage, things like that, I could take this and I could deploy it and I would be all ready to go. If all you care about is running your application in a Docker file, what we have here is a good place to start and you should be ready to go. But I do wanna add two more things for this video. And the first is how to run this using Docker Compose. And the second is to add one more thing to our Docker file in my specific case, which is making it so that it compiles our Tailwind libraries into a minified CSS file. I'll do the Docker Compose part first, and then I'll show how to do Tailwind because that is pretty specific to my application. To add Docker Compose for this application is actually going to be super easy. And that's because right now we only have our .NET Blazor application. There's no database, there's no API, there's nothing like that. So what you wanna do is in the root of your folder, you're gonna to wanna to add a new file. And this is docker-compose.yaml. And I'm going to start with services. And then we want to give it the name of our service. So in this case, I'm just gonna call mine blazor blog. And then I'm going to give it the build command, which is just build and then it's just a dot because we're just telling it run the Docker file in their current directory. And then I'm going to add ports. And again, what you put in here is going to depend on where you end up deploying this. For my example here, since I'm going to run this locally just to make sure that it works, again, I'm just going to use, I'll use 5006 this time, and I'll map it to port 8080. And for our application, the way that I have it set up right now, this is probably all that you actually need. Since I'm not connecting to a database, I don't have anything that's specific to the development environment in my app settings files. I don't need to pass in an ASP.NET Core environments variable. If you did need to do that though, this is what it would look like. You would pass in environment and then the name of that environment variable and then the value. This is super simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and take all that out and I'm gonna go test this. So I'll open up another terminal. I'll make sure I'm in my root. And all I have to do here is say docker compose dash D for detached mode and then up. Unknown flag, is it in the wrong order? Dash D, there we go. Now if I go to my browser and if I change this port number to 5006, then it's still working and everything inside my post is still working. And since my application is so simple, you might be thinking, well, your Docker Compose is so simple, why even bother using it? That's a pretty valid question, but for me, I just like having Docker Compose files because it's just a simple command. It's Docker Compose up and you're all set and ready to go. You don't have to worry about environment variables and putting them in correctly, mapping reports and things like that. So I just like it because I'm lazy pretty much. All right, moving on now to Tailwind. Since I'm using Tailwind in my application, I need to have a step that's going to build my CSS files based off of the Tailwind classes I'm using in my project. And basically that's just one more step in our Docker file that's for a node step to run Tailwind. To prep for it, here's one more thing I added into my package.json file. I set this up earlier in this series where I have a script called Tailwind Dev, and this is going to run Tailwind, and it's going to add the watch flag onto it so that it will watch if files change and recompile the CSS. But obviously when we're going to build this for production, we don't need the watch, we need it to be minified. So I've added another script called Tailwind and it's the exact same. The input file is in our styles folder. The output is in our WW root folder. But then at the end, I'm passing in dash dash minify. 
And this is just going to build that CSS file in as small of a package as possible so that our files going to the client are that much smaller. So that's step one. The next step is to go into the Docker file and we're going to add in a new section to build this. There's probably a couple ways you can do this. I do know that this way is working. So if you have a better way, please let me know in the comments down below. But after my restore step, I want to run this script that's going to run the Tailwind script in our package.json file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new stage and it's going to say from node and I'm going to use the Alpine version and I'm going to call it node Tailwind. And then I'm going to set the working directory to slash source and I'm going to copy in all the files from our project. And I'm going to set the working directory to source slash blazor blog. And that's because the package.json file that we want to use is in that folder in the blazor blog project. And then lastly, I'm going to use npm to run that tailwind script. And since the node image has npm in it, we don't have to install anything. This is going to run that script for us. Now we need to modify the next step for our build because we're currently using the image for node. And obviously we can't run .NET build in a node image. So we need to go back into .NET to finish this build. And to do that, I'm going to make one small change up here. So right now we're calling this stage build, but this isn't build. We're actually just restoring. So I'm going to change this to be restore. And then down here, I'm going to say from restore as build. And essentially what I'm doing now is I'm just picking up back where I left off up here. Then I need to redeclare my build configuration argument, and I'm going to reset the working directory to slash source. And next we need to copy in our files, but we don't want to just copy in everything from the host because that would mean that we don't have the files that we built up here in our tailwind section. So instead what you want to do is you want to copy from, and that's going to equal node tailwind. And we want to copy everything from its source directory to our source directory because we are currently in our source directory. So I'm going to go ahead and move that up. And then everything from here on out should be the same. So I'm going to set my working directory to the blazor blog folder, and then I'm going to run .NET build. So I hope that's not too confusing, but I do want to go out and make sure that this works. But I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this. So I'm going to rerun my Docker build command. Once that's completed, you can go ahead and I'm going to rerun this. So I'll say Docker run. Again, I'll use port 5005. And we'll go make sure this works. Change this back to port 5005, and you can see it's still working. And one way you can verify this is by comparing the app.css files in your current project and the output of the Docker container. So if I go into my Blazor blog and the WW root, here is my app CSS. And this, as you can see, is not a minified file because that's not how our dev process is set up. And now you can go into your Docker container and you can look at the app.css file inside of that. And the easiest way that I think to do that is just to go into Docker desktop. I'm going to click on that container and then go to files and then expand the app folder. And then down at the bottom, expand the WW root. If you right click on that app CSS folder and say edit file, and now you can see it's just one big long line in a single file. So there's no tabs, there's no new lines, none of that stuff. And so that means our build is now working correctly. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And like I said, there will be a link to the code in the description down below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.